welcome to vks coding so today i have developed one program basically that program is returning the cheapest shop in the city for whatever the item we want to buy it so this program what it does suppose i want to buy grocery in bangalore so i just uh, pass grocery in bangalore i want to buy it then this program returns to me in dmart you can buy that is in mahadevpura that will sell the cheapest grocery in the city so from this program i am getting lot of benefits so now i wanted to commercialize this application so everybody get benefit and i can also earn some money right so what i did it i have web hosted this application so now people can connect it and they can also get the benefit they can also query like they want to buy shirt from mumbai my application will return some response from which seller you can buy it that will sell very cheaper in that city so now my program demand is increases now lot of people are trying to use my machine and they are ready to pay for me so now what happens whenever my program runs it consumes some memory and the cpu and in this machine it has a suppose 16 gb ram it is having an 8 cpu it is having so it is not able to handle the more requests so how can i fulfill the more request so i need to find a solution to fulfill the more request for my program so let's proceed further and see how did i solve this problem to handle a more request i have a two option i can first one i can buy a bigger machine which has a cpu of size 16 and the ram has size 64 gb and i can get a more smaller machines which have a similar cpu and the ram but we will have a more number of machines so both will fulfill my request now if i increase the cpu and ram i can fulfill more request and even i can increase the number of machines uh, which can also handle the more request so my problem will be solved right so when there is a bigger machine which will serve the request that is a vertical scaling when there is a smaller machine which is a collection of machine which either handling the more request that is nothing called a horizontal scaling let's see further uh, more properties of vertical scaling and horizontal scaling so here we have a uh, properties about the vertical scaling and the horizontal scaling the first property is a single point of failure in the vertical scaling because we have a uh, one machine if this machine goes down uh, we are not able to serve the request right so single point of failure in this case and in horizontal scaling suppose machine first will go down uh, second machine and third machine still can serve the request so there is no single point of failure in the second point it is fast in communication in horizontal scaling because inter process communication happen there is a one machine and suppose the three threads are running t1 t2 t3 t they can communicate between each other via ipc so it is very easy right there is no network call involved in this machine but if you come to horizontal scaling it has to talk over the internet because the communication happen between the two machine m1 m2 m3 so there why uh, the communication in the horizontal scaling is little bit slower compared to vertical scaling and the data is consistent in vertical scaling because in vertical scaling there is a one big machine right and that is connected to the single database so updating a single database is very easy and it will be consistent as well but in case of horizontal scaling we have a, a multiple database connected to multiple machine and suppose we have a requirement at one time we have to update both the db but suppose we have updated one db and we are not able to update the second db that time we will not have a data consistent and the fourth point is uh, load balancer is not required because uh, we have a one machine user can directly query and get the risk but uh, in case of horizontal scaling when the user query right when the user query the request first come to the load balancer and then uh, from the load balancer it will distribute their load randomly to these machines or if we apply any algorithm in the load balancer that will distribute the load so basically load balancer algorithm i have explained in very details in the coming videos please check out my playlist for understanding the load balancer algorithm the next point is the hardware limit right so even we uh, buy a bigger machine but so they are having some ram as a 128 gb and cpu as a 64 gb so there is a limit we can't increase more than that right after that afterwards we cannot increase but in the horizontal scaling if we buy a smaller machine like a 16 gb ram and it will be cheaper also right and easily available so we can easily scale so there is no hardware limit in the horizontal scaling but there is a hardware limit in the vertical scaling let's see a few properties of a system design so here is the first properties the system should be scalable whenever the load increases right whenever the load increases our system should be able to scale so that's why system should be scalable and the second property is the data should be consistent suppose uh, 
अब आवर एप्लीकेशन इज राइटिंग द वैल्यू ए इक्वल टू फाइव देन इट क्वेरी फॉर रीड फ्रॉम द डेटा बेस टू इट विल बी एबल टू रीड ए इक्वल टू फाइव सो बेसिकली वी हैव टू सिंक दिस टू डेटा बेस सो बोथ कैन रिटर्न द सेम वैल्यू सो दिस प्रॉपर्टी ऑल्सो वी नीड फुल इट वेन वी डिजाइन अवर सिस्टम एंड द थर्ड प्रॉपर्टी इज लाइक हाईली अवेलेबल इट मीन्स इफ द यूजर इज क्वेरिंग टू आवर सिस्टम एंड इफ आवर वन एंड इज द सिस्टम टू इफ आवर सिस्टम टू इज डाउन देन लोड बैलेंस should not redirect the request to the server 2 it will always redirect the server 1 and server 1 should always return the response so these are the few properties like a uh, system should be scalable system should be consistent system should be highly available and there are few property as well system should be reliable security and lot of things are there so please do subscribe my channel to get to know more about the system design